Um, yeah, you know, I just, um, I just, we just talked about it, you know, briefly with, with the team in that, um, uh, winning, um, you know, for people who, who have played any sport or there's been any kind of competition, you know, winning, um, is, is a difficult thing, you know, and, um, Sometimes here at Connecticut, we've made it look like it's like it's easy, and that people now that you get the impression that winning is easy, and winning is not. It's never easy, you know. Um, and winning all the time is never easy. And we've won so much that, you know, there's a perception that we just you know come out and 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 we can name, you know, how many wins we're going to get every year, and it's not like that. So. You know, if you're a freshman and this is the first time you've ever won a championship and, you know, and you're proud of it, you should be. And if you're, you know, our seniors and this is the fourth time you've done it, then you should be proud of that as well. So, you know, it takes a lot to win. And um, nobody sees the amount of practice time that goes in and the amount of, you know, just actual time spent um, on the game. So... I'm proud of our team, especially this year and the way it played out, especially the way it played out this year. Could have really, really, really gone sideways, and it didn't. Yeah, um, you know, there was, there was a time um, when I used to try to, uh, I used to try to f pick out the formula for winning, right? And I would, you know, when we had 16 league games, I always thought if we could go 12 and 4, we could win the league, you know? And... Uh, uh, a road win was like huge. Like you were, if you could win four out of your eight road games, it's like, wow. You know, and those were such incredibly emotional days because you knew how hard it was to win on the road and, and you knew you had to win all your games at home. And, um, and after every bus, you know, everything was a bus ride. So, every, you know, no, no tablets, you know, this is all you had going home for four hours, you know, staring at the stat sheet. And um, I remember those days, and, and I kind of miss them, to be honest with you. And, and now, you know, five losses in a season, and, it, you know, at one point it's, uh, it, it's, it's looking like um, we're never going to get a handle on this, you know, if we don't, if we don't do something. But um, it's, it's a different kind of a challenge this year than it was before. It's... Um, um, I think it was more um, non-basketball related, the challenge. Um, the, the thing that made it, makes it rewarding from a basketball standpoint is this is probably the most frustrated I've ever been trying to teach the game of basketball because, um, you know, in addition to having a lot of young kids, um, you never know how many of them you're going to have there on any given day or how much you can practice on any given day. So yeah, this was very, um, very rewarding to have this happen, and it means a lot. And I think the coaching staff and the training staff, athletic training staff, and our strength and conditioning people and our nutrition people, um, you know, everybody associated with our program um, should be really, really proud right now. Yeah. Gino, third straight game you've had everyone except Paige available. Are you feeling? Like you have a better sense of who works well together on the floor, or what lineups are starting to work. Um, sometimes it, it, you look out there and you feel like this is a good group, and you don't know why, but you just do. And then there's times you look out there and you say, "This is not a good, this is not a good group." And if somebody said, "Well, why isn't it a good group?" I said, "It just doesn't look like a good group," you know, and you could tell. Um, so you, we're still trying to, 
you know, whether it's in practice when we're trying to figure out who, who plays well with who, who, who has to be in with who, um, you know, and that's why we can't afford to get, you know, some of our guys in foul trouble because, you know, we just don't, you know, we might have a lot of depth, but it's not the kind of depth that's unlimited, you know, like we can get Nika and E in foul trouble. That's, it's a recipe for something bad to happen. So, we're trying to figure it out, little by little. Hi, Gino. We saw Paige kind of going through warm-ups and in her uniform today. How is she feeling with this next step in, in her rehab and kind of what's her status? I know you told us she wasn't going to be playing this week, but just to see that today. Um, oh, you know, I, th I think it was maybe a month ago. How long has it been? Nine, nine weeks? Nine weeks, right? So over two months, right? So maybe it was a month ago. I don't know. She walked into the athletic training room, and she had this big swollen knee. And everybody said, this is not good. And this is going to set you back a long time. <laughs> and she came back two days later, and it was gone. And I said, what happened? She goes, uh, I'm different. She said, I talked, you know. I told God I needed this swelling to go out, and it went out. I, I, I kid you not. This is this is the kind of this is the kind of stuff I got to listen to, at, and worth. Um, so the kid just has this knack of she she heals, you know, at her own pace, and she's got a meeting tomorrow with Dr. Arciero, and. Um, after tomorrow, we'll see what happens. Pox of Tony Page. <laughs> and she sees her shadow, right? So this might be two more weeks of rehab. I don't know. <laughs> Gino, two questions. You said the other day that uh, you were going to stick with the same starting lineup unless something really made you change your mind. And today you put Liv back in there. Mm -hmm. And then second, just... The impact that Avina has had of late. I mean, she right. just seems to be playing the best basketball yeah. she has since she's been here. Yeah. Uh, the some of some of the things that you say, you know, that you love to do, are great in the moment. But then when you go to practice and you actually try to put them into use, you realize that some people are better suited for a certain role and you could be wrong, and you have to change your mind. So, you know, I just felt like going with Liv today gave us a better, a better flow, and Dorka's, Dorka's explosive coming off the bench, you know? Like, she makes things happen. And that was the same mindset going in with Avina. You know? I said, Avina, we don't have anybody coming off the bench that changes that game, so that's going to have to be you. That's all there is to it. I don't even think I said that. I just said, Nico, you're starting. And I think he figured out the rest. Now, and then, you know, I said to her, I said, we helped our team two ways. You know, we got Nika a lot more playing time, and she starts the game with a certain edginess, and we helped our bench at a time when we really needed help coming off the bench. And she stayed with it now. And you're right. This is the best basketball that she's played in all the time she's been here. She's just... Yeah, she's the Avena that I always thought she'd be. Do you know? Do you anticipate uh, putting Paige right back into the starting lineup, or do you anticipate she's going to play a few minutes here and then a few more minutes the next game? And and how do you how do you adjust your rotation now that she's been out for so long? I don't know. I don't know. You've been telling me all this time that when we get everybody back, it's going to be amazing. You know, now, you know, hey, when you get anybody, everybody back, what are you going to do? <laughs> um, everything gets sorted out eventually, you know. Um, um, it's, um, it, it's, it's, it's really weird when somebody comes back from an injury, you know. Um, how many minutes are they capable of playing, not because of their injury, but because of their conditioning? You know, how many minutes are they capable of playing? And should those minutes be in the beginning? Should they be 
spread out through four quarters? Should they be, you know, in the middle? When should they be? All these things kind of, you just kind of play it by ear, you know, and, and trust you into it, trust your intuition. And um, I, I don't think whatever decision is ultimately made is going to be a bad one. You know, if, if Paige is playing, then the rest will take care of itself. Hmm. Hey, Dina, I was just wondering, um, coming up Sunday on Senior, senior Day, um, <clears throat> these guys have been through a lot um, last year with all the freshmen, and they had to kind of bring all those guys along. And then this year, how, how much has their leadership just really helped you? Not even basketball-wise, but I mean that too, but, but their leadership. <clears throat> the one, the one thing that our fresh uh, that our seniors all all have is they're they're pretty um, they're pretty like this. It, they're like this. They're very vanilla. You know, they don't get real high on things and they don't get real low on things. So I think. Them being like that has kind of made it, you know, a lot easier for everybody else to kind of look at them and go, they're not worried. I mean, they might have been, but they didn't show it, you know. So I think their, disp their disposition and their demeanor, without even saying anything, probably really made a big difference for the younger guys. And the younger guys just want to play basketball. Like they, don't, they, don't, they don't get caught up in a whole lot of stuff. They just want to play basketball, you know. Our freshmen and sophomores, they just want to play. You know, you tell them we got to practice, they ugh, got to practice. But they want to, they want to play. And as long as we have a game, they're good to go. And so. Last year, Paige said that when she got played, she could be playing in the year that she would rather just play the Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I um, I think it's important that kids respect each other, you know, and um, I think there's a lot of respect that they have for each other, and they like each other, you know. Sometimes I've coached teams that, um, you know, you had a lot of kids on the team that were, they made an amazing basketball team, but individually, they weren't so much fun to be around. And then, you know, you've got teams where you know, like it's an amazing group of kids, but put them out on the court, and they're not very good. And then I've had years where you got both. you got a group of amazing kids you enjoy being around, and they make a hell of a team. You know, I've been fortunate to have all three. This is a, this is a good group. They spent a lot of time together. I think COVID did that too, you know. They were forced, you know. To, uh, to spend a lot of time together, and they made the most of it. Um, and our freshmen are pretty, freshmen and sophomores, I would say, are pretty easygoing, pretty likable. They're, you know, so it's, it's been um, it's been good. It's been good. I'm, I'm, <laughs> Jamal said. You know, it doesn't seem so bad. Like, we only got a couple games left and it went by so fast. It doesn't seem that bad, does it? And we all looked at each other and said, you remember what we were saying to each other a month ago? <laughs> it's like the guy in Shawshank Redemption, right, Andy? By the time he got to Mexico, he goes, that wasn't bad. <laughs> really? <laughs> Do you have an update on uh, Dorka after she took that shot in the fourth quarter? Yeah, she just she just got some stitches in there. Uh, I don't know how I don't know how it happened. I, I didn't see it, but um, you know it's classic ones where you get hit in the mouth and you know your teeth. Her teeth are fine, but she just had a cut inside her lip, and our doctors took care of it, and she looks she looks great. Her English got better right away. <laughs> I can understand her better. 
Tina Swincast was um, named the finalist for the Naismith Hall of the Electric Chances. Ah, yeah, she's a no-brainer. I mean, there's people in there that don't have her qualifications, right? Yeah, Swin's a, Swin's a Hall of Famer, man. You know, she's been a Hall of Famer since she walked in my office or <laughs> when we were recruiting her. Um, you know, NCAA championships, WNBA championships, Olympic gold medals, and, you know, all the things that she's done and, you know, what she's meant to the game of basketball. I mean, um, I mean that's, that's what the Hall of Fame is, right? That's swing catch. Uh, you just knew she was different. She just had a different mindset. She thought very highly of herself. And she still does. And that takes you a long way. You know, she was supremely confident in her abilities, supremely confident in herself as a person, and played that way and did everything that way and attacked everything that way. So I'm not surprised at anything that Swin's accomplished. Not one thing since the day she got here. Because remember, she came in with Asia and, and Tamika, and it was like, I know you guys are good, but you ain't as good as me. And that's how it started, and that's been like that since day one.